God can take care of you. Psalm 24, reading verses 1 through 3. Psalm 24, verses 1 through 3. Ready, read. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Amen. For he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor so deceitfully. Five, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Amen. Six, last one. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Shaker. Amen. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. God can take care of you. Regardless of what it is, know for sure that God can take care of you. When it comes to life, when it comes to family, when it comes to anything that pertains to us, God can handle it. God can handle it. He can take care of you no matter what it is. We have to realize and come to an understanding that God is God. His word is his word. Meaning that God will never change. He said that he is today, he is the same today, yesterday, today, and forevermore. So God cannot change. He is the same. He was always and will always be the same. His word, he said, stands sure forever. And he said that it will not return to him void, but that it will go and accomplish everything that he wanted to accomplish. So all of these are words of assurance that the God that we call Father, our Savior, our Helper, is the God who can take care of us, regardless of what it is. No matter what you're going through, no matter what might be pressing you today, you might say, I don't have the finances. You might not be in 100% health. Or someone in your family, you've been trusting God um, to heal or to bless. God can do it. God can do it. We have to believe the word of God, know the word of God, have faith in the word of God, stand on the word of God and to speak the word of God. When God created this world, he did so by words. He did so by words. He knew what he wanted the world to be like. He knew what he wanted to put in it or on it and he knew why he was doing it he knew he made it Holy Spirit let's go to Genesis 1 and read in verse 1 Genesis 1 verse 1 Ready, read. In the beginning, God created an earth. Two. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 
Amen. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. So God made the heaven and he made the earth that we live in. And it says, the earth was without void, without form and void, and darkness was everywhere upon the face of the deep. And it says, and the spirit of God, and the Holy Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's the same Spirit of God that lives in us. The same Spirit. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's the same Spirit that's in us, all Christians, all who genuinely belongs to God. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So everything that God wanted to be in the earth after he created it, he said, let. He spoke it. So everything that is in the earth came about out of words. It didn't say that he went down to the building hardware and pick up blocks, rocks, cement, and mix them with water. Doesn't say that. All it says that God said, let there be. And before that, and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. God made everything by words. The same spirit that moved upon the face of the waters is the same spirit that dwells within us. So just how God was able to speak, speak us into being, speak the earth into being, take man out of dust and made man, and put his spirit in it, his soul, his mind, his intellect, breathe in us, and we became a living soul. Everything done out of words. He took the dust, made man, then breathed into it, and we became alive. Words. Trees appeared. Words. Animals appeared. Words. Heaven and earth. Words. Words. And so we were made in the image and likeness of God. He gave us dominion over the earth, tell us to be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth. Have dominion over everything that he made. So he gave it to us, everything that he made. But yet we just read that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. If God is your God, know that if he can make a whole world, everything that we see with our natural eyes from nothing, know for sure he's more than capable and able to take care of you. No matter what the situation is, he can take care of you. As a child of God, we are guaranteed blessings that he's spoken. By his covenants that he keep, we are guaranteed a good life. By Jesus' sacrifice, dead burial, resurrection, the blood that he took and placed on the altar in heaven, freed us, redeemed us from all the curse of the Lord. So if we do our part, if we live right, if we do what God has commanded us to do as his children, then we get to live that life that he's given to us. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. We just read that. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor swore deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation that, this is the generation of them that seek him. We must seek him. 
we must live for him. We must lift up clean hands and a pure heart. We must do what he tells us to do as saints of God. The covenant blessings, the blessings that God has spoken by his covenant, they belong to the children of God. So as a child of God, God can take care of you. No matter what it is, no matter what it is, God can take care of you. If you're looking to God for something this morning, if you feel as though your prayers are not being answered, know that God can take care of that answer or that prayer that you've given to him. Trust him with it. Trust God with it. But you cannot be living like the devil and expect the prayers to be answered. You cannot have unforgiveness in your heart and envy and strife going on with you and expect God to take care of you. A lot of people don't see things happen for them because they're not living the way God tells us to live. We must do our part. A lot of us fall short when it comes to living right with people. Serving God. A lot of us say that we belong to God, but do we really belong to God? That's the question. We say that we are saved and we are children of God, we are his seed. But are we really his children? The way we live with people, the way you move and do things for God, can you genuinely say that you're a child of God? We want God, God can take care of our needs and we want God to take care of our needs. He will, provided we do our part. We must do our part, people. Life gets better and sweeter the more we pour out love on God and people, the more we do the word of God. We don't just know it, don't just hear it, but exercise it, work it. Pray instead of complaining. Pray instead of sitting back and doing nothing. Pray. Open him out. It is the prayers that God will answer. Give it to God. Like Christ said. Cast, cast, cast. When we learn to do it God's way. We start to see manifestation of what we pray for. Come to pass. But if you have unforgiveness in your heart this morning. If you have envy and strife against someone. You're jealous about this one. What they have. And you murmur and complain about everything. And you want to take your cares to God. Well, you could take them. See the manifestation of them? I don't think you would. Because we have to be a doer of the word. Life becomes better and greater and sweeter the more we trust him. A lot of us don't trust God. A lot of us don't give him the time of day. A lot of us only know God when we are in need. Some of us don't sit down long enough to him speak to us. We're busy running after that old mighty dollar. The only mighty is God Almighty. Stop running after trying to fix it and make it work for you. Yes, you need to work. Yes. Because you need seed to sow. God said he ministers seed to the sower. And so, when you work, you work for seed. When you work, you work for seed. When it comes to your needs and your wants and your desires, you go to God with them and say, this is what I need, I want, I desire. And you allow God to meet that need, want, desire. But when we work to meet those need, wants, and desires, you're eating the seed cannot eat the seed. God take care of us when we give it to him, when we come asking and believing, receiving it, but we must be givers also. Because the word of God say, whatever man sow, that shall he also reap. When we learn to follow God's words, we really get to see God take care of us.
I was offered some soup yesterday. And the soup sound real nice. When you think they said, now the soup ain't gonna have no meat in it. I said, but how you could eat pumpkin soup or soup without meat? Well, you know, you used to get vegetable soup. I said, yeah, but I used to put salt dog sausage in it. kind of be like, fine. And so that soup becomes soup with meat. I said, I don't eat soup without me. I said, that's the weather for soup. So they say, well, I say, Father God, thank you for the meat, for the soup. Because I don't want no soup without me. I would be lying, I want it. So I was going to say, well, well, you know, um, I thank you because that's a blessing. I know blessing to me. I'm not a vegetarian. I am not a vegan. So you give that to who are vegans and vegetarians. That would have not been a blessing and I was like saying, mm. So we went about the day and so I got a text, but I was in prayer with God when I got the text. When I did get, uh, when I came out of prayer, and I saw the text, the text said, I don't want to misquote, right? But I'm going to give you just a little gist of it from what I remember. The soup is finished and we have conk, Ribs, salt beef, and, I said, and ham. I said, nah, we got soup. So we went from a soup that didn't have no meat to a, meat, a soup that had four different types of meat. See, it's what you settle for. My God, no, I, I, I really, really like meat. I love, no, I like and I enjoy soup, good soup. But I don't want soup without meat. So, when the offer came, I said, but soup does have meat. <laughs> I re see, I refuse to settle for the soup without the meat. Some of us, we halfway hear what we ask for. And so we run with that. We take it, okay, well, I can just get it. No. Don't halfway accept it. Get just what you ask for. If you ask for a particular car, and a different one come, say, Father, I thank you for this, but this ain't it. You know what you're already given to the master. So go and get what you ask for. We have to trust his word. We have to know him. We have to know his way of living. We have to know how to get things from him. Because no, the God that we serve is a spirit. And so when we read in his word that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In Christ, that's everything that you could possibly want from the day we were born until when you take your last breath. Or if Christ comes first, whichever one comes first. So God isn't holding us anything from us. We hold from ourselves when we put self in it, when we don't trust God to take care of it. If you know the word of God and you trust the word of God, then you know that God can take care of you on everything you need. Everything. Give it to God though. Take it to God. And he will not disappoint you. He will not disappoint you. I, was, I wanted some crackers to go to my coffee one day last week. And I said, Father, I thank you for some crackers. And all of a sudden, someone take us some crackers. I say, ah, well. I want you want some crackers? I say, thank you. But you see, I prayed and asked God for crackers to go with my coat. I didn't go to the shop. I sit in an office. And they just went in the bag and take it. You think they went in the bag and take it to crackers? No. My prayers send them in their bags to give me crackers. This is how God works. God uses people. And so they said, Vonnie, that's enough. You had enough. I said, yes, thank you. But I didn't like that particular brand. <laughs> I said, thank you. And so it was several of us sitting in the office. And so um, the one who sat next to me, he usually offered me rockets, but he didn't have any in his bags. 
it is back. So the following morning, I said, of course, I say my prayer. Father, I thank you for feeding me. That's my prayer. My prayer says, give me to stay my daily bread. So that means I take care of my food. Yes. So before I made my crack, before I made my coffee, I sit down getting my desk ready. All of I see, crackers. <laughs> I say, you see, you see why God loved me? I say, you see why God loved me? I say, I am loved by God. And everybody start laughing. This is the next day. I didn't get the right one the day before. The next day, pull it out. It open. I say, but he love you all too. I live my life expecting to hear from God. I live my life expecting God to answer my prayers. I live my life trusting in God. So when you trust in God for everything and your mind is in nothing other than what you prayed, what you asked for, and the God that you gave it to, then know for sure he will bring it and manifest it in your life. Someone called me yesterday morning and they said, I feel like eating some fish. What you feel like eating? But they said they couldn't find no fish. Everywhere they went in all that rain, they was looking for fish because they felt like eating fish. This time I smiled because I really felt like eating some fish too. So I was like, go on, look at you again. So that, but they couldn't find no fish. So they say, oh, I got no more than all of this rain. So I prayed up a prayer. So they said, what you feel like eating? I said, I really want, I felt like eating some fried snapper. Really want some fried snapper. That's on my mind. So we, I prayed a prayer. I said, Father God, take them to where the snappers are. I said, oh, bring the snapper to them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I kid you not, less than 10 minutes later, they call me and say, you know, I got some fish. I say, I went back to um, the place where we went. And they only had small snappers when I went, but when I went back, so you know they had big snappers there. Wow. Amen. God. God. I say, Father, thank you for my snappers. See, when we trust God with everything, when we give it to God and we believe in his word and we believe God, you see the manifestation. So we have to not just Hear the word of God. We have to believe it. Put your faith in God. Put your faith in the word of God. But you must trust God. There's no use praying to God and you don't believe the prayers you're praying. You don't believe that God is going to answer the prayer because after five minutes you get up and your mind go right back and trying to fix the problem. Trying to get it. When you say you give something to God, your mind don't go back on the situation trying to go and work it out. And some of us, we got plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Because if God ain't got it, by at least plan D, I should have it. No, that means if you have all of those plans, you never trusted God with the situation. When we learn to trust God to take care of us, we present that problem to God. And we say, Father, I thank you, and I know that you fixed it for me. I know that it's already, the door's already been opened for me. I know that you can handle it. You say I must cast my cares on you because you care for me. So God, I bring this to you knowing that you can handle this. This is not too big for you. So our faith and our trust in God must come with our prayers, when we take our prayers to God. Do never come praying if you're not going to believe that he's done it. So when I pray, I pray from a place of having it already. So when I pray, all I do is getting permission. I said, when, when I was young, grown up, and I wanted something out of the fridge, I know my mommy's gonna tell me, yeah. But I couldn't just go in the fridge and take it. So if I wanted an apple, if I wanted an orange, I wanted some juice, mommy, can I have? That time I didn't have it in my hand because I know the answer was going to be yes. So when you come and you ask in God, see you with it. 
All you're doing is asking God because you know your father in heaven, he will give it to you. But if you come and you pray and you ask God and you come in with doubt and you're not sure you're going to get it or you just pray in the prayers because you know you should pray. If there's no faith and no trust in God and his word, you'll not see the manifestation of it. So when we pray and we ask God for anything, we must first of all know in our heart, in our mind, that the answer is yes. Because of his word, no good thing will I withhold from them that walk upright in me. But notice, walk upright in me. A lot of us want things from God, but we're not living right. We're not doing what he tells us to do. Got to get it right. All of it. There's a part that God plays. There's a part that we play. And there's also a part that Satan plays. Satan also plays a part. He's the accuser of the brethren. He accuses men before God when they sin. And he's very good at it. Very good at it. God responds to faith and belief. His word is what God responds to. Our part is that we must be born again. We must be children of the Most High. We must love the Lord thy God all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our, all of our soul, all of our strength. And we must love our neighbor as ourselves. We must be a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. We must know the word because it's the word that we give God when we pray. We must believe the word. We must have faith in the word. So when we come, giving God our cares, we come casting them because that's what Jesus said we ought to do. When we cast them, know that God will bring the solution. He will manifest what we're asking for. Have to. When God said, let there be light, he wasn't guessing if light was going to come. He knew that once he spoke it, it was going to come. God gave us that same power. Remember Ezekiel? Dry bones on Ezekiel. God spoke the words to Ezekiel and tell Ezekiel to repeat the same words. When God spoke the words, nothing happened. Why? He told man to have dominion over the earth. Mm. Mm, come on now. We want God to speak. We want God to speak. The God, you tell Satan to stop. You tell Satan to leave alone. But God give you the power. Yes. Come on. Yes. We must know the word. We must know to keep Satan on our feet. That's where Jesus put him. God put him there. He gave us all power over the power of the enemy. That means Satan cannot be speaking to you. He cannot be speaking to a child of God. And if he's speaking to a child of God, my, my question is, why? Why is he speaking to you as a child of God? As a child of God, Satan, Satan have no right over you. Don't let him speak to you. Now he can come and try to whisper in your ass, but if you say silence, Satan, you have to shut up. That's amazing. That's power. That's knowing who you are in God. So when he comes and say, you will never, you never, you never, you say, say so shut up in the name of Jesus. My God says yes, you cannot tell me no. But then you need to find out where it says yes. Because he can say, well, God, if they can't show me where yes is, I'm going to keep telling them they can't have it. We have to know where it is. Ask and it shall be given you. So when you ask God, you know that it will be given. So you have to know where it is in the word. This is how when we give our cares to God, they get answered. 
by the word of God, by the spoken word of God that we speak back to God, that we speak in our situations. If you have faith, if you believe, you could say to any mountain, be thou moved and cast into the sea, and it shall be done. But you have to have the faith. You have to believe God. You have to stand on his word. Because truly God can take care of you no matter what it is. It might appear big. It might feel like as though you've been toting it for a long time. Stop toting it. Say, God, I'm tired of toting this. Um, because God never tells us to tote it. We tote problems and situations because we lack knowledge. Or we don't trust God to tote it. We have to know without a doubt in our hearts that whenever we pray, God will hear and he will answer. Do not waste time with prayers if you don't believe the prayers are going to be answered. Then you're wasting time. Pray prayers that you know God have already answered. In other words, whenever you pray, pray knowing that he already said yes to your request. So whenever I come to God, I come from a place that I have already received it. Always receive what, you, what you're going to God for. And you have to receive that with faith. And stay in faith until you see the manifestation of it. Have to. Faith and belief, trust in God we bring the manifestation of all that you pray and ask God for. All. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, reading verse 19. Ephesians. Ephesians, no, Philippians, sorry. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians 4, verse 19. Ready, read? But my God One more time. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. So know for sure that your God can supply all of your needs. All. A lot of us don't believe in God. That's the problem. We must believe in God and we must believe that he can take care of all our needs. Because truly he can. He care for us. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When you come to God with a need, make sure you need that. Our prayers are prayed incorrectly. Father God, make me a millionaire. I need a million dollars. I need three million dollars. Oh, Father God, you say I'm a millionaire, so I, I need a million dollars. My God shall supply all my need. Can you prove to him you need a million dollars? That's the reason why the millionaires are not man, um, um, showing up. Because they cannot show God why they need a million dollars. Why they need seven million dollars. Because most of them only want a house and a car and they want to just spend, spend, spend. Our God is not a wasteful God. He don't waste. When Jesus fed the 5,000 and the 4,000, what did he say to his disciples? Pick up all the fragments. Pick up all the fish, fishes and the bread, what was left. He said, pick them up. Why? God don't waste. So when we come to God and we ask God, Father God, I really need, I need a new house. Why do you want the house? See, you have to come with, he said, 
Make your request known. But he say with strong reasonings. What is the reason behind what you want? Why do you want it? And once you can give him a reason as to why, he will release it. God don't waste. And most of all, you're going to be held accountable. Father God, I, I want me a seven bedroom house, five bath. I want a jacuzzi and I want a pool. And this for me, nobody else. There's nothing wrong with wanting a nice home. Nothing wrong with it. Make sure your asking is the right asking. God will always, he say, he'll give us our heart's desire. Know for sure he'll give you your heart's desire. But when it comes to God taking care of us, he's not short on resources. He's not short on anything. We just have to learn how to trust him with it. And my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That means that whenever you ask him um, for anything, his riches can far surpass what you're asking for. He is not sure. He can take care of all what his children ask him for. He have more than enough. Far more than enough. So we don't have to ever worry if um, God can meet our needs. Yes, he can meet our needs. Every need that we can possibly have. He can meet those needs. But we need to first of all come to him with those needs. Present it to him. Father God, I, I thank you for a new vehicle. I need a new vehicle. This one is oh, too old. It's on its way. But instead of selling it, I'd like to bless someone. So let me be able to fix this one up and give me a brand new one. And you watch the doors open to where you can get a brand new one. See, we have to have um, not just our own interests before God, but we also have to come for our brothers and sisters. He said, pray for them that despitefully use you. He said, pray for your enemies. So if we can't pray for our enemies, then we're not following his words. We have to learn how to pray for our enemies. Ask God to bless them and take care of them. And just like how we want God to take care of us. And then we pray and we ask God for things. We pray and we ask God to take care of our enemies' needs. So if you have somebody in here who you, you, you don't like or you know don't like you, then you go ahead and pray for them. Pray God's blessings over and protection over them, their family. You pray for them because this is what Jesus said we ought to do. Love our neighbors ourselves. See, when we learn to work the word of God, then we start to see manifestation of good things come to us. We cannot just sit back and just think it's we in a world and it's just us. Just our family. Just our friends. Some don't even have the friends are the interests that are. Some of us wouldn't even pray for our friends. Some of us wouldn't even pray for our, our family members. We have to learn how to love. We have to learn how to do it God's way. And when we learn how to work this word and trust this word, believe this word, and truly love God first, then we really start to see manifestation of good things come. But things are not released if we're not doing, keeping our, doing our part that we're supposed to play as saints of God. We must walk in a certain way. So God is more than able to do everything that he said that he can do for us. And he truly will take care of us. Let's, be in, uh, let's, go to, let's read 13 now. Philippians 4, reading verse 13. Reading 13, ready to read? I can do all things through Christ. One more time. I can do all things through Christ. So we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. A lot of us won't do it without God's strength. And this is where people get tired. People get tired because they want to do it in their own strength. They want to exclude Christ. You cannot exclude Christ if you want things to work out for you. If you want things to be smooth and great, Christ, God, have to be the center of your life. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And so when you see you get home after you get off from work and you're dead, dead tired, you don't have nothing left. It's because you've been working all day in your own strength. We have to learn how to everything. Give it to God. Do it in God. Trust God. 
Do it as if we do it unto God. Give as if we give to God. We have to do our part. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Our strength our things of God comes through God. Jesus. Trying to do things in your own strength only makes you physically tired, mentally drained, nothing left in the tank. Tired. Can't sleep in the night because why? Your body just is not at ease, not at rest. Your mind going, 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 going because you're excluding Christ. If we give everything to God, he will take care of it. But we have to learn how to give it to God. We have to learn how to trust his word and do what Christ say do. Do not try to do your work outside of the strength of Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is why we have nothing left for family after we get off from work. No time left for ourselves. Definitely no time, quality time left to spend with God because you're sleepy, you're tired. Your body need rest. But if we learn to work every day, and that strength that we end up having is the strength Christ gives. You see some people, man, they got, look like an endless strength. Look at their walk with God. I bet you everything come out of their mouth is Jesus. Praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is good. He's wonderful. Oh, he's, it's like they on, they hide. Like they want something they hide. Why? Because this God strengthening them. God strengthening them. If you walk there, you see a Christian, you say, I mm. <laughs> They ain't open it. Get your strength through Christ. The word strengthen us. It is our food. It's our food. When you see I come out of church. I look here, I'd be so high, I have to ask God to put me to sleep. After Bible study, 11, 12 o'clock in the night, I'm still up, and I, I, I could go for another 10 hours. The Word. You draw your strength from the Word. Christ is the Word. So we have to learn how to do it God's way. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that means everything that you have planned, and you've brought that plan to God, you have the strength to do it. You can do all things regardless of what it is. So don't shorten yourself. You can do all things, but it's through Christ who strengthens you. God has to be the center of your life. Cannot just pick up the Bible and just read the words in the book. No, you have to read and study with Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit is the one who gave this word. Man wrote it, but they wrote it because they was inspired by God Almighty. So when a time come to knowing this word, Holy Spirit, okay now, let's go, let's go study. I need you to open this up to me. What does this mean? I don't understand. Give me understanding. Give me wisdom. And this is what I do. If I come across a passage that I don't understand, Holy Spirit, what is the meaning of this? What is this? Give me more. Shine more light on it. Give me more. Give me understanding. Is this for me to do today? How am I supposed to carry this? Or what do you mean? Give me clear understanding. And you find yourself understanding it every time. Over and over. There's a time I just read. But I didn't stop reading. I read even though a lot of it didn't make no sense. I didn't stop reading. I read and I read for many, many years. Never stop. And I would ask, okay, I don't understand, Lord, what's the, what's the, give me understanding, give me understanding. It is in the asking. So when you give your life to Christ, then he's responsible for you. God can take care of you, no matter what it is. So let us get in the habit of giving him everything. Everything, no matter what it is. See, we only want to pray and ask God for money. Money is seed. Money is something that we give, something that we sow. We just want to ask God for material things. God is more than just material things. We have a spirit that needs to be fed. We are spirit that lives in an earthly body 
but we are a spirit and that spirit that lives within us is the spirit that commune with God our body doesn't commune with God it's our spirit man that communes with God so we have to take the time to get in the word to nourish our spirit man we have to hear the word so our spirit man can grow so that spirit man don't dry up and wither so that the spirit man which is joined with Christ's spirit speak and we see manifestation so we must be joined with God this is why Christians need to have a solid foundation and deep root in the world when it comes to God we don't have to worry about anything nothing at all let's go to Proverbs 4 Proverbs chapter to 4 reading verses 20 Proverbs four twenty through twenty two. Ready, read. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For our life unto them, and help to all their flesh. Amen. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. This is the word of God. Let my word not depart from your eyes. Keep my words in the midst of your heart. That's your mind. That's your spirit. For they are life unto them that find them. For they are life unto all that find my word. And health to all their flesh. From the crown of their head to the soles of your feet. The word is health. 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 So all who walk in sickness, there's no need to walk in sickness. Get the word of God. And when that little cough come, headache come, I reject it. It's not of God. It's not of God. Let's go to Exodus 23. 23. Read in verse 25. Exodus 23, read in verse 25. Ready, read. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of Amen. So God can take care of every sickness, all, but we have to do our part. They say, keep the word, hide it in your heart, for it is what? And now we just read, ye shall serve the Lord your God, but it says you shall serve him. You shall serve him. So all who serve God, God says, I will bless their bread and their water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of them. So when you serve God, you can afford to come to God and say, ain't no sickness in this body. So when the devil try to come and say, you're going to get this and you're going to get God, shut it down. No, can't be. Because I keep God saying, I've had them in my heart. They are held to my flesh. And I serve them. Therefore, he blessed my bread and my water and he take all sickness away from me. So you have, this word have to, it have to connect. It have to make sense. But you have to work it. You have to know it. You have to know what this, the promises of God are to you. So I don't take sickness anymore. When sickness come, I say, not here. Not here. I serve God. I'm his child. I know the word. I can't sit down. Because he tell me, don't do that. 
Sickness is not of God. God don't give nobody sickness. Sickness comes through sins and iniquities, generational curses. So if you've dealt with your sins and iniquities, you've broken up and destroyed all generational curses, no sickness could, could come to you. Not at all. Unless you give that spirit agreement to come. Don't give them no agreement to come. Your body is the temple of the Most High. So if God's spirit dwells within you, because as a child of God, Holy Spirit comes in and dwells. So when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit came and take up residence in you. So if the Holy Spirit in there, where's sickness going? Tell me, where are you going? Not in my temple, can be. Other than that, either I don't know the word, I don't trust God to keep me from sickness, to keep me safe. I work in an office and they just still wear, some of them still putting on masks. When they was wearing masks, I know office I wasn't putting none on. Now that I ain't got to put none on, I go and grab masks again for what? <laughs> what? I know the word of God and the word of God keep me safe. The word of God tell me he will bless my bread and water and take sickness away from me. That's all sickness. If I hide his word in my heart, I know it, I keep it, it will be held to my flesh. And that's only two places. So when it comes to every area of your life, know that it's blessed if you keep the word of God, if you trust him to take care of you. He will supply all of our needs. We just read that according to his riches and glory. Every need of the saints of God should be met. There should be no need goes unmet. Because according to God's word, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not only that, let's go to, let's go to Haggai. Let's go to Haggai. Haggai read in chapter 2. verse 8 Hegei 2 verse 8 Ready read The silver is mine and the gold is mine say the Lord of Amen. One more time the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, save the Lord of hosts. Amen. So if the silver is God's, and the gold is God's, who you think they for? God needs silver and gold? No. But he's letting his children know they belong to him. So if you need silver and gold, you go to God and ask for silver and gold. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. So if God have the silver and gold that we need, all we have to do is go and ask. We go ask by faith, not try to wake ourselves in the ground day and night. Got to work it correctly. We have trust in the Lord. We must put our trust in God. Must put our trust in God. Many people out there working hard every day. They are billionaires, billionaires, and some of them still live in a small apartment. You think if I got billions, I could live in a small apartment? <laughs> when God say to us, ask, he want us to ask. When God say to us, cast your cares because I care for you, it's because he really care for us. He want to help us. He want to give us all that we need. So we shouldn't have to worry about gold, silver. God own them. Our God own them. Our Father own them. But God don't need them. Because of heaven, the streets are paved with gold. He don't need no gold on him. 
The streets are paved with gold. He is building a mansion for all that serve him on this earth. Focus on the mansion. Don't focus on the things down here. They will pass away. So if you have a need and you need gold, go to God for the gold. Come with strong reasonings, he said. If you are on medication today, say, God, I don't want to take no more of this medication. Anyone on medication, you ever read the fine print? Look here, the little paper that they put it on, the writing look like it's must be two size font. <laughs> That's how fine it is because they don't want to really take the time to read it. And look at it, it only solving one problem. But it creating at least 15, 20. Oh, but the side effects is you could go crazy, you could go down, you could have this. You, and all you want is to cure the headache. <laughs> you only think I can trust the headache with God? I can trust the headache with God. So why am I going to put the drugs in my body that's going to destroy my body over a period of time? When I could just go to the mass and say, but God, your word says. They who serve the Lord their God, he will bless their bread and water and take sickness away from them. If I hide your word in my heart, it will be, it will be held to all my flesh. Then why should I not believe this word? When I've been putting it, if we put this to practice, life becomes sweet. Life becomes amazing. God will open doors for us to get the silver and gold. God will open doors for us to get our needs met. Because if we bring it to him, he's obligated to his children of God who is keeping his word to manifest it to pass. When God said to Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? Ezekiel said to God, Lord, only you want to know. Only you want to know if these dry bones can live. And so God knew that the bones could live. If he, if he used his word to speak to those bones, they could live. But his words cannot be spoken by him. His words have to be spoken, be spoken through man. So he used Ezekiel and said, okay, Ezekiel, say to these dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. We have to hear the word of the Lord. If you want any dry area in your, in your life to stop being dry, hear the word of the Lord. Speak the word. He said, Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, it shall be done. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, a mustard seed is, look here, it is so tiny. If you take and you put a little dot from your pen, you make it out. That's the size of a mustard seed. And you look at Mount Everest. Goes up in the, up in the clouds. But that size seed of faith is all you need to move Mount Everest into the sea. Mm. Only God can do that. It ain't the seed that is doing it, you know. It is the word that you're using, the faith in the word, the faith in your God, to know without a doubt that once you speak, he will do it. So no matter what it is, it could be the size of Mount Everest in your life right now. You take that and you cast it on God. You speak to the mountain. If it's dead, if it's your finances is too small, then you go to God. Father, I thank you for the seed that you've given to me, but I need more. It's not sufficient to meet my needs. You said you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So, Lord, you say you want the silver and gold. So, Lord, I need help. I need. You say I must trust you and lean not to my own understanding. So if you have anything and you uh, have not surrendered to God, surrender to God. Let God take care of it for you. Cast it. Give it to him. The gold is his. Silver is his. You belong to him. 
because he says the earth is his and the fullness thereof, they that dwell therein. But he said we must have clean hands and a pure heart. In other words, we must live and walk in holiness and be upright in God. We must truly be his children. We must do what Christ told us to do, which is to put God first, to love our neighbors. Everything that we come to God for is an easy thing to get provided we're doing our part as a child of God. We go about trying to make money, trying to keep a roof over our head, but we have to know how to do it with God's help. Let's go to Deuteronomy, 20, um, Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, read in verse 18. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. 8, verse 18, ready? Read. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get right that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. Amen. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth. So the power to get wealth, a lot of us running after wealth and riches, this says God give us the power to get wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that give it the power to get wealth. So in God, we trust him, the wealth is taken care of. He'll give us the power. He'll give us the ideas to get wealth. He'll show you how to get wealth. And most of all, if we do what we're supposed to do, he'll show you how to keep it. So there's no use running after wealth. The word of God says it is vain to, what it is, how do I go? Sit up, get up early in the morning and to stay up late at night to eat the bread of sorrow. So when you sit down or you start your day dead early, you go to bed late at night. God says vain. Because what you do, you end up eating the bread of sorrow. In other words, don't do this in your strength. Remember the Lord thy God for us. He that give it the power to get wealth. We want to go and make this money. We want to go and live this life. And we want to do it our way. We can't do it our way if you're looking for it to be successful. We can't do it our way if you're looking to get the blessings that will make us rich and ours no sorrow. It is only in Christ. Running after the things of God. Working the word of God. Trusting in God Almighty. Making him your Lord and Savior. And doing the will of God. It is how we get what we're looking for without being weary, without getting tired and have strength to do a lot more for God than we're doing today. Take every care that you have and give them to God and learn to spend time in his presence, in his word. Put God first. You put him first by spending time with him in his word, having conversation with him, meditating on the word. That's how you put him first. But when it's all about you, I have to go to work because I got to put food on the table. I got to keep a roof over my head. I got to put up my, for my future. I need a, a pension plan. I this and I that. You take God out of the midst of it. And so all of that energy, the word of God says, it is vain. It is vain. Early in the morning to get up, to sit up late in the night, it says to eat the bread of sorrow. So all of that energy you're going about, and you know the sad thing is, a lot of people take all their young years and waste it trying to do it their way. And when they get old, tired, they got plenty of time now on their hand. Oh God, I should have done more for you. Oh God, I'm so sorry. Don't have a bunch of regrets. The word of God says, find him in your youth. It's the reason why he wants you to find him in the youth. Because when people then get older, they've gone so far and they didn't make their money. They feel as though they've made the money. But we just read 
For it is God that given us power to get wealth, not man, but God. So let us take every care, cast it on God. We are running after the wrong things. We must learn how to do it God's way. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 9. Read in verse 8. 2 Corinthians 9. Read in verse 8. Ready, read. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. One more time. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, to every good Amen. So when we learn to do it God's way, and we become a giver and a seed sower, and we give to God, and we do what he tells us to do, it says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency. Everything that you need, God will make sure you have. All, everything that you need, he will make sure you have. Always having all sufficiency in all things. In all things. May abound to every good work. Meaning that you're supposed to do good works. You're supposed to do good works for the kingdom of God. You're supposed to share what you have. You're supposed to do what God tell you to do. We want the good things in life. But we want to do it God's way. A lot of people serve Satan. A lot of people have sold their soul to Satan for fame and wealth and for riches, for money. Sold their one soul to the devil for money. There is a better way. Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's Christ. Don't run after the things of this world. They are freely, they were freely given to you. They belong to you in Christ. The gold, the silver, everything you could possibly want. The lands, the buildings, the wealth, they belong to you in Christ. So you don't have to spend your precious time running after things. All day long running after money. All day long running after things to please you. No. The way to do it is to serve God. Be a a servant of God. Child of the Most High God. Doing His will. Giving your cares to Him. That's how you get them answered. That's how you live life and live life more abundantly. When we do it God's way. The riches, everything belongs to God. The earth, the fullness, everything and every man belongs to God. God has given us free will, free will to choose. We choose whether we're going to serve him or not. That's our decision. We choose to grow our relationship with him. That's our decision. We choose to spend time with him. That's our choice. Choose the right Um, choices make the right choices I should say make God first in everything you do and life becomes sweet life becomes peaceful life becomes joyful life becomes more fulfilling more rewarding you find yourself laughing and enjoying life so much more because now you have the peace of God we are not poor people in Christ we are all rich 2 Corinthians 8, we're already there, so just turn to 8, read 8 now, verse 9. Verse 8, sorry, chapter 8, verse 9, ready to read? For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through he was rich, yet for your sins he 
he became poor that through his poverty might be rich. So if you are in lack today, if you are in poverty today, it's got to be something you're doing wrong. Because Jesus, it says, the Lord Jesus became poor so that we don't have to. He became poor so we don't have to live in poverty. So if we're in lack today, poverty today, break the curses and keep it moving. If you're in lack, give your arms. The word of God says, that he who gives to the poor shall never lack. He who give to the poor shall never lack. Uh, thing is, we don't want to give. We want to give, um, I wouldn't even say a tip because I don't even give $5 so as a tip. Some people won't give $5, $2 to God for arms. No, man. Mm -mm. Not when he give you all the seed. Not when he minister seed to the sower. You don't give that to God. And when you give to, when you give to the poor, you give it to God. So let us make sure we understand this. Let's go to Proverbs 28 and 27. 28 and 27. Got to get this. Proverbs 28, read in verse 27. Ready, read. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Let us not have no curse. Let us give so we have no lack. If you're living in lack today, why? If you're living in poverty today, why? See, a lot of us don't ask God questions. If we ask God questions, he can answer you. Not when we don't have to. Jesus said he became poor. That through his poverty, we might be rich. So there's no poverty as a child of God. Poverty. If you're living in poverty, repent for living in poverty. You shouldn't be living in poverty. If you're living in lack, repent. For not giving how you're supposed to. And get it right. Because Jesus became poor. That through his poverty we might be rich. So we're supposed to be rich. We're supposed to be rich. One of my desires from last year. and I, I'm, I'm, Let me tell you something. I'm going to work it until I see it. Father make me a $10,000 tithe a week monthly. And I will live to see that. And I'm going to live and see that shortly. Because I have things to do. For God. Not for me. For God. For his kingdom. A lot of people are in need out there. So the more I have to give to God. The more. I should get coming in. So if I only give in five dollars to God. Or if I'm only giving five dollars arms. My prayers. God you know I don't want to give five dollars. Make this five, five hundred. Make this five dollars, five hundred, so that I can give more to you. But when we hold back on the five hundred and say, I can only give five, then you are eating the seed. The five hundred was given to you as seed. Why? I minister seed to the sower. So if you're only giving tithes, you're robbing yourself. Arms must, must be given. Because if you don't, it says, but he that hide his eyes from the poor shall have many a curse. Many curses for them who are not giving to the poor. For them who are not helping the needy, the, 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 the widows, the fatherless. If you're not doing that, you will have many curse on you. And so this is why you have to know the word of God. My prayers is make me a $10,000 tither. Because if I can give 10000 tithe, then I can give 10,000 arms. And I'm going to give 10000 towards the work of the kingdom of God. And I'm going to give God the $10,000 to make sure God house never see lack. I have purpose. There's a reason why I want that. Because if I given 10000 as a C, as a tithe, and that means I have at least 90000 left. And I don't keep 90% of what I make. I sow 50% of what God gives me. I give God 50%. So off the bat, I'm looking for $50,000 every, every month to give back to God. That ain't no money if you ask me. That's small money. 
for the things that needs to be done and for God and his children. I'm talking about meeting the needs of others. I'm not talking about trying to have a big house and a nice car. No. You've already given me that. I give God thanks for that. Moving on now to he that give unto the poor shall not lack. He that give to the poor lend to God and he shall repay that back again. This is what I'm after. This is what I want to see in my life more and more of. And so until I get there, and when I get there, I only get in there so I can ask for more. See, because God has to know that he can trust you with it. God is not going to have you. Because a lot of people can't have money. It will destroy them. Because they just spend it all on themselves. You see how much people win the lottery and all they do is some of them say they wish they never won the lottery. Why? It just destroyed their lives. They wish they never won the lottery. You've got plenty of people praying, praying to God to win the lottery. Why are you praying to God to win the lottery and the gold and the silver? It says, if you're such a child, you have gold and silver. Why you won the lottery? Some of us don't sit back and think. Oh, you know, if I win the lottery, God, I can give you this and I can give you that. You can't give him what in your hand now. No, man, God didn't give it to you to um, destroy you. Must have purpose behind it. Let's go to Isaiah 26. Read in verse 3 and 4. Isaiah 26. Read in verses 3 and 4. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, ready to read. Thou sh in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Amen. Thou will keep, God will keep you in perfect peace. Because your mind is stayed on him. Because you trust in God. We have to trust in God. If you're looking for that peace, trust God. Don't trust self. Don't trust man. Because when we do that, we trust God, we trust man for take care of us and to meet our needs. We are saying to God, he's not capable of doing it. God cannot keep me, God cannot take care of me, cannot keep me safe, he cannot keep my children, he cannot provide for me, he cannot do nothing for me. So it's going to be me. I'm going to put my trust in me and me alone. See, when we do that, we walk and put a curse on our heads. Trust you in the Lord forever. Trust you in the Lord forever. Trust you in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is ever lasting strength so we cannot put our trust in self in the paycheck in parents in people we have to put and keep our trust in the Lord God Almighty forever and he will keep us in perfect peace he will keep us a lot of people don't have peace because they don't have God as their trust. We have to make sure do it God's way. Let God take care of you. And so if God take care of you, you'll have more than enough time to spend in his word and to spend in his presence. He open up time for you. If you make it a habit of spending time with him and you make that a priority, then you see your life grow. You see your life transform. You find yourself becoming uh, more at peace, more at ease. You find yourself enjoying life more. If you can walk outside and don't hear the birds sing, or don't hear the birds singing to God, if you can walk outside and don't see all that beauty out there, your mind is too cluttered, too much things is going on. Remember when I started to trust God, man, I heard them birds singing. I was like, what? Didn't even know birds were out there singing. Why? Because your mind always someplace else. Put your mind on the things of God and let him comfort you. Let him keep you. Let him keep your family. But make sure give God everything. God can take care of you and everything that comes with you. 
do not make the mistake but trusting in self trust in the Lord with all of your heart lay not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path but you must trust him amen, amen. father God we give you thanks for your word Lord forgive all of us father God who have not put their trust in you who've not trusted you with their cares with their situation with their matters Lord we repent forgive us oh God teach us oh God how to trust you how to believe in you how to believe in your word how to have faith in you for you say without faith it's impossible to please you so father god bring up our faith let us stay in the word father god to increase us father god in your word and to grow our faith for your word says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of god so teach us oh god how to commit time to you every day coming to you coming and hearing your word listening to your word reading your word that our faith grows stronger and stronger in the name of jesus god if we've put our faith and trust in man father god you say it's a curse on us so god we repent for putting our trust our trust in man self anything other than you lord forgive us and lord i ask you to move all the curses off of us that we've placed out of ignorance father god for not trusting in you lord forgive us and we thank you for moving the curses of us off, off of our heads in the name of jesus thank you for this week father god i ask you to go before us all throughout the remainder of this week father god making the cricket part straight and the wrong right fighting against them that fight against us, contending with them that contend against us, smashing down gates of brass and cutting through bars of iron for us all, giving us encounters with you more and more each day, Father God, giving us all sufficiency in all things. Father God, teach, teaching us, oh God, how to really give, how to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and our strength. If we're not there, get us there. Father God, and to love our neighbor, our neighbors as ourselves, Father God, if they're in need and we, we have it and we can meet that need and you've brought them to us, let us not harden our hearts, O oh God, and not assist. Father God, that we do not put a curse on our head, Father God, but that we follow, Father God, follow Christ and truly keep our eyes on you and you alone and not our situations, not what's going on in our homes, not what's going on on the job, but to cast them on you and you alone trusting you father god to fix every ear of our lives in the mighty name of jesus i pray your peace over us over our homes our family members our dwellings i pray your blessings over us over our homes father god over our families in the name of jesus over this nation father god watch and keep all father god in the name of jesus and god continue to open great doors for us father god as we learn more and more of you father god let us exercise and be a doer of your word father god and be a keeper of your word that we hide it in our hearts father god that we truly attend to your word and let your word father god truly bring health to air to our flesh father god in the name of jesus teach us how to serve you teach us how to serve you how to live for you Father God, in the name of Jesus and God, if we've been selfish, if we've not been sharing all that you've given to us and we have been hoarding it, putting it up or complaining about what we don't have, Father God, forgive us. Murmuring and complaining, Father God, is not of you, nor do you accept it. Father God, the children in the wilderness and wilderness died, the older generations died because they murmured and complained. Let us, Father God, as your words say, be thankful in all things, to give you thanks daily in all things, Father God. And Lord, if we are sitting up, if we get up early in the morning and sitting up late at night, you say it's in vain that we do it. Teach us, O oh God, not to do it. But to balance every area of our lives, Father God, that we give time, Father God, to what we need to give time to. If we are wasting time, Father God, close the doors on all wastage in our lives. Close the doors on all wastage in our lives, Father God. Starting first with our time. Time, Father God, is important. Time, once it's spent, we cannot get it back. So Lord, let us make full use of our time every single day. Most of all, making the time, setting it apart to spend time with you morning, noon, and night. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, ground us and root us more and more in your word, in you. Father God, continue, Father God, to show us errors in our lives. Father God, that is not bringing you glory. That doesn't please you, God, that we may repent and stop it in the name of Jesus. And God, be the center of our lives. Be first for you, so thou shalt not have any other gods beside you. So, Lord, let the God that we call God you be first in our lives, the only God that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.